Hi, I'm Greg Whitcomb. I am a clinical assistant professor at the Medical College of Wisconsin Department of Neurosurgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Lynn Mark. I am founder and president of the iGiant and the former senior medical advisor to the White House, HHS, and NASA, and an adjunct associate professor of medicine and endocrinology at Yale and Georgetown Schools of Medicine. So Sarah Lynn, um, we know that there are huge forces at play in healthcare system today, from cost to outcome. And uh, we also know at the same time that there's been an emerging um, awareness of the importance of sex and gender in uh, informing healthcare and how we provide it to patients. Um, and that has uh, taken shape and affected clinical delivery of care to some extent, but there are certain people who've actually stepped out of the shadows here and have taken a more proactive role, and you're one of them. So we're really pleased to have you here today to talk a little bit about your efforts through I, a Giant. So if you'd explain that a little bit and um, tell us how that is pulling together multiple mm -hmm. stakeholders in this area, um, I'd appreciate it. Great, thank you so much. The I Giant stands for the impact of gender and sex on innovation and novel technologies. We know that men and women interact with technologies differently from every single aspect of our lives. The genesis for the program came about while I was working as a scientific policy advisor in the Obama White House. And we were focusing on precision medicine and we were also dealing with the Ebola crisis. And to me, the low hanging fruit was really sex and gender, how men and women adapt to their environments differently. Mm -hmm. I developed a program so that we could launch it outside the White House, focusing on sex and gender in all aspects of our lives, from healthcare to IT to transportation and retail. The iGiant became a nonprofit last year. The mission is to accelerate the translation of research into gender and sex specific design elements, such as a program, such as an educational program, a product, it could be a medical device, a drug, a shoe, tennis racket, okay. protocols, what are you doing at the bedside, or as, as well as the R&D table, and, and policies, inclusion. Are we including enough men and women in our trials so that we can make the appropriate decisions on how we treat? Sure, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, stakeholders that you've uh, pulled together so far and some of the yes. other iGiant roundtables that you've held around the country and the world? Well, the major platform for the iGiant right now is the roundtable. The roundtable accomplishes three things. First, it brings people together to establish a common lexicon. It allows people to share their best practices and most importantly, it empowers and encourages individuals to go back to their respective sectors to innovate. They basically become ambassadors. In October of 2017, we launched at Purdue the iGiant Roundtable Scholars Program, basically attracting undergraduate and graduate students so that we begin educating all our folks yes, from right, the earliest right. ages to be aware of sex and gender-based differences. Sure. We're moving from the roundtables into innovation challenges and prizes. We're also hosting um, eventually a corporate advisory council so that we can begin developing a metric, a system of, of metrics so that we can establish a seal of approval. So iGiant is clearly an important mm -hmm. next step in, in uh, embedding sex and gender uh, in all these different uh, elements that we have, including patient care. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the champions that you've been able to engage in this effort and um, how that's going so far? It's been extraordinary. The iGiant works with stakeholders from academia, from the advocacy community, from our federal agencies, as well as from industry. We have champions, and I call them champions because they've actually pioneered roundtables. They've helped to support our innovation prizes. They've supported our roundtable scholars programs, and hopefully they'll come on board for the corporate end into the advisory council to develop that seal of approval. We've had groups such as diverse as Boston Scientific, Microsoft, Cook Medical, NASA, DOD, VA, many, many academic centers. Stanford very graciously hosted our first web page before we even had our website up and running. And many advocacy organizations, including the American Medical Women's Association, which has been an extraordinary champion to help us get our mission and our, our vision out to the public. I often ask people, think about how sex and gender impacts your life, both professionally and personally. It could be as simple as, have you ever taken a drug or device that hasn't worked for you? Have you ever worn a shoe or used a surgical piece of equipment or worn a boot that hasn't fit you? Have you ever driven in a car and had a serious neck injury? Have you had trouble using your devices, your computers, your phones? 
all of this impacts how we live our lives. And the basic vision of the eye giant is, is, is simple, but very, very profound. To improve the safety and quality of life, including work performance for men and women. Thank you very much. Thank you.